special episode. A huge shout out to those of you guys who chose to do this with me. Well, I, I said I was doing a Q&A video. I wanted to know all of your thoughts about Pokemon Go and what questions that you had about the game or any other channel related or just a question you wanted to ask. So I'm gonna go from the top. The first question is from, uh, or at least I'll start from the bottom. Uh, first question is from Chris Props and he says, what's up dude? What's up, I'm good, how are you? Thanks for asking. The well, next comment, at least, is from Spitfire. And he says, hey, been a long time. Yes, it has been. Good to see you in the comments. Thanks for responding to this video. But the next real question is from Luke Bennett. And he says, in what ways do you feel that you have used having dyslexia to your advantage? Also, what about Gen 3? Um, what about Gen 3 are you most excited for? Uh, any favorite Pokemon in particular? So I'm gonna answer the first half of the question, uh, Luke. Uh, my dyslexia helps in terms of the way I think. So most of the time I end up with a very out of the box kind of point of view with most things in life and also towards Pokemon Go. And you would have seen that from other videos I've done like Poke Design and other elements and even the way I break down what I talk about in my videos. I feel like a scatterbrained, though there is like order to the chaos, if that makes sense. So that's kind of how my dyslexia, and in many other ways, relationships, talking to people, it is in everything that I do. It's part of who I am. Though it doesn't define me, it does affect many things. And it's taken years of practice to get over the, 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 the bad habits. So yeah, so that's one thing. And second part of the question is Gen 3 Pokemon. I'm excited for Gen 3, but with hesitation and a lot of expectancy. Maybe put the hype to the side. Uh, Gen 3 has a lot of potential to be great as a release if Niantic do it right, and they do it in a way that will bring uh, excitement back to the game. I think uh, Niantic need to find a way to depl deploy updates and stay connected with the community in a way that interactivity and connectivity with the community is constant as opposed to being really constant, nothing, really constant, nothing, really constant and then just nothing at all. And I understand that they're working on stuff but staying connected with the community base, finding ways to keep the community engaged and involved within the game and outside of the game is a huge part of what makes Pokemon great. So without anything happening outside of the game, alongside it, then it kind of becomes boring and stale and there's nothing to do and people say the game is dead and it has some truths to it, but we could do an entire video just based on that. Next question. Next question is from Will Fong. He says, hey smart, how do you think they can release the EX Raid Pass? Because um, at the moment, it seems very random. It is entirely random, and the whole point was it was supposed to be an exclusive thing. And I've touched on similar things in about Pokemon Go, like the legendary Pokemon and the events that they do where only people who have enough money to fly to another country to get those legendary Pokemon, like Mewtwo, I feel like Niantic kind of went backwards and just, they should have started with the first set of legendary Pokemon and Mew should have been part of those Pokemon. I still don't understand why they've held back Mew, but Mewtwo is already in the game. It's just really confusing to me. And I understand that they were trying to find a way that ties into the things that are happening within the Pokemon Company and Nintendo franchise. However, this is an AR, this is an augmented reality game. The, the, the potential as to what you can do with this game is limitless and I've proven that again in Poke Design videos that I've done in the past. I really went into exploring, which brings me to one point. I know that Nick did a video yesterday called 53 Reasons Why Pokemon Go Is Dead or titled something like that. Not one person out of 53 people mentioned trading. I have not heard any other Pokemon Go YouTuber talk about trading at all. And yet, trading is like one of the biggest parts of what Pokemon has always been about. 
Training, trading, battling, trading, training, battling. The three word together. It's, it's, it's those three things. Trading is a core part of them. They still have a drop trade. <clears throat> they stop talking about it. You're, you're selling a game with half of the product available to people. And I keep seeing, whether you're doing augmented reality or 3D, you, all of these companies who keep developing games and thinking that it's okay to release stuff in a beta, beta slash Kickstarter mentality. And what I mean by that is you get people to sign up for just a portion of an entire thing because you're afraid that if you give too much, there isn't gonna be enough to do later on. But if you come up with creative ideas that don't limit even what you can do with the, the limitations within a platform or a mobile device, it's, it's not that complicated. Quests, things to trade, helping the community to organize local events where people can win like badges or even being able to pet your Pokemon basic stuff and it's one of the reasons why I felt like the UI design in Pokemon Go could have been a whole lot simpler and more true to the original Game Boy game series which would have allowed a lot more room for creativity uh, and, and, I, and I showed this example with the map that I made so those of you who haven't seen that episode I recommend you go check out that episode because it has a lot of juicy things in it that I feel could have been implemented and hey you know I didn't patent the ideas it's based on Pokemon so if Niantic wanted to borrow a couple of those ideas they're more than welcome just let me know if you use them and don't just take my ideas and say they're yours but yeah the possibilities are endless thank you will because that kind of led me into a tangent and this video has turned out to be longer than i thought it was going to be moving on well last question is from russell anderson who says have you tried draconius go it's brilliant i have not even looked at draconius go i've seen a couple a little bit of footage from it and though i've heard it improves on the things in pokemon go uh like pokemon go had and they say it's not a clone I haven't heard anything about trading in Draconius Go, so still, another Pokemon Go-esque type game that doesn't involve people being able to do things more interactively as a community. It's, it's a big miss. So, I mean, if we had, let's go back a couple of years. We had cell phones. Cell phones that could swap contact information, personal contact information via infrared. That was also possible in the original Game Boy games. I don't understand why we can't implement Bluetooth technology or some other type of technology for trading and stop, get out of the box. Companies, if you ever watch this video, get out of the box. I'm sorry, I should just make my own Pokemon Go. Anyway, so that's gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you for watching. If any of you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section underneath the description. I'm sorry this video is late. Also, hopefully the lighting is good. Uh, yeah, but thank you for watching this video. And remember, you are not alone in your circumstances. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. I will see you next week, Wednesday, for an interesting episode. But I won't give anything away. Thanks for watching. God bless. Peace. Oh,